My, my, my subject is random orchestration. Uh, as I was looking at Christmas time, the Christmas story, um, and the words I've said, I've said under different headings. But today I want to encourage somebody who feels like your life is random. A random series of events. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I look at my life and I feel like a jigsaw puzzle with parts and pieces missing. Sometimes I put a, place, a piece in place and I say, yes, 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 yes. And then two days later, I realize it's wrong and it has thrown the whole puzzle into a mess. Hmm? So, random. How many of you sometimes feel like your life is a series of random events? <laughs> circumstances I came to encourage you because when you read the Christmas story it also sometimes looks quite random yet in the randomness there is an orchestration happening and the summary of it all is um, the Christmas story my friends is a parable is a parable of things that are in heaven ending up on earth. The word became flesh and tabernacled among us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, I'm sure as we end 2022 and step into 2023, I hope you have dreams and hopes and ambitions. Oh my God, as this year ends, some of us have a, a tiny little smile on our face for what God has done this year. Come on, anybody like me? <laughs> God has done some things for this boy. God has done some things for me in the randomness of my life. Huh? Do you know this building is a random event? I mean, we, we went to venue number one. Said, yeah, this is where God wants us. Then the following Sunday, we went, went to venue number two. <laughs> yeah, this is where God wants us. Now we are in venue number three. And it's, yay. <laughs> hmm? And sometimes it feels too random. You see, this woman I married, was she random? Is it a random event? This job, was it a random, is it a random job, your job? Doesn't it sometimes feel like it's random? Because you thought, perfect job, then you met the boss. And you thought, Lord Jesus, is it you who brought me here? Is there a plan? Because when you read the Christmas story, Christmas story is about something so powerful, so divine, so pure. Jesus, the Son of God, ends up on earth. The Word became flesh. It's, it's symbolic of everything we want to materialize. Things that are in heaven we want on earth. Miracles, blessings. Things that we dream of and we wish they would happen. And the birth of Jesus is an orchestration of random events which end up precipitating something amazing. So tell your neighbor for me, God is going to take the randomness of your life. <laughs> huh? God is going to take the randomness of your life. And sometimes I, I, I feel this panic when I'm booking a flight. Because, um, uh, okay, I'm going to Chigali, Rwanda. I can fly British, Rwandan, Ethiopian, uh, Qatar, Egypt, so many airlines. Which one must I fly? So you put it into Google. Cheap flights. 
Tochegari, enter. And you wait, and it goes spin, spin, spin. It is also searching, it does not know. So you end up buying a ticket from something that did not know on a random airline. Hmm? On a, and it, it's there asking you, which one of the, of the three tickets do you want? And they're all the same price. This one lives at three. This one lives at seven. Which one should I fly on? And after you've cleared that, which seat are you sitting on? All of it is randomness. And then you end up sitting on a seat and the person next to you is a key person. And you have a key conversation over a Google search for a random ticket. I, I, is anybody hearing me? I met, uh, told you how I met uh, Troy Brewer, who we had been separated as an American friend, pastor. We hadn't connected. I didn't know where to find him. We, we, we lost each other. And uh, I booked a ticket on an airline on a particular day, going to one country. He is going to another country. And then in the randomness of checking in. I check in, and then in the randomness of boarding, we have to get onto a bus, and the bus drives you to your plane, and then you come out, and so when the bus is gone, you have to wait for the next one. And so <laughs> it's all very random. And suddenly, in the randomness of that situation of waiting for a bus, the Doors open, and Troy Brewer is in front of me. And he says, Lincoln Saranga, I've been looking for you all over the world. <laughs> huh? How many of you have had random events turn out to be orchestrated by God? Yeah, so let, let me settle down because time, time is going. Uh, I wanted to first um, talk about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Luke 1.5. Marvin, if you can project that. Luke 1.5. We are talking about um, a priest. The first spark of the Christmas story is a priest called Zechariah. Now, let's read it. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Continue. But they had no child. There is a problem. A prayer request. Which has gone to a time. They prayed year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. Now they are old. They are past bearing age. And they have no child. And they are, it's over. They're wrapping this thing up. Next. So it was while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell. Now, I want to stop at the word lot. His lot failed to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Now, what is a lot? It's where you get the word lottery. Now, the priesthood and the life of the Jews, hearing God and following God and making decisions, had this weird thing called lots. In lots, they, would, they didn't know what to do. In a lot situation, it's like, who next? Who's on duty today? So, for us, we wrote here, team one, team two, team three, team four. Simple. Which week is it? No, no, no. no. Who is going into the temple was a lot issue. As in, dice are cast. Die, die are cast. And we see what comes out. So out of a random event, out of what was a random choice, eh, it falls upon Zacharias to go in. 
And this randomness of lottery turns out to be divine orchestration for something he had been praying for all his life. I don't know whether anybody is hearing me. God knows how to take randomness and turns it into orchestration. <laughs> so the Lord falls upon him. And he goes in on rota. And he doesn't know that what was random lottery is divine orchestration. I speak that over you today in Jesus' name. May randomness, may God attack your randomness and turn it into orchestrated scenarios and events where doors will open you and find key people, things that you have pushed for and prayed for for years. Suddenly, when God wants to move and when God is moving, randomness becomes hijacked and caught up into processes that are divine for things that would have been impossible to happen, to suddenly happen. So he steps into the temple of the Lord and an angel is waiting for him. <laughs> huh? Jesus. Now, let me tell you how we went to Dubai. The first time we ever really went to Dubai with my wife for a wedding and we have to choose a hotel. There are a thousand million hotels in Dubai. We sat with my wife with our laptop until I said, Jesus, just deliver us from this difficulty. <laughs> there are too many hotels all over the city. Everyone is saying, come here, come here. Discount this, that. I told my wife, I'm tired. We are going here. And I booked. When we got to Dubai, we found we were five minutes away from Carol and Martin's house. Yeah? And we walked there for dinner. What's more weird is this. We get to the hotel, and Jackie Mugabo is checked into that hotel. And about 20 other people <laughs> from London, from this sub-community in the same hotel. Your randomness is more orchestrated than you know. Yeah. No house that I enter. And I tell you, we've moved house my wife and I, have, we've moved house I don't know how many times. But each time, every car, any car we've driven, any shirt I wear, I don't take anything for granted. I have learned to. That what you think is random. Yes. Eh? There is an eye, a filter yes. up there. There is a filter yes. in God which turns the randomness of those that love him. Did you see how these guys were devout? When you go back, the Bible says they were following God. They were devout. Lift up your hand and just thank God for he is about. May 2023 particularly be a year where randomness turns into supernatural orchestration. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Uh, now, uh, Andrew just told you the story of how he's ended up getting ready to, for Anglican ministry. When you hear their story, my God, how random and how orchestrated. <laughs> how random and how orchestrated. Bible says God makes all things, all things to work out for good. All things. God is a God of orchestrations. So, Herod wakes up one day and says, I command, I give a decree, let everybody go back 
to where you were born and register for a census that it may be fulfilled which was written by the prophets yeah, that Christ must be born in Nazareth because Joseph and Mary were living in a completely different place through some random decree by a crazy ruler who wants to collect more taxes from the people. Mary and Joseph travel back to her birthplace to be registered that a prophecy may be fulfilled. You see, this morning, I, I took time to even pray. You see, because to me, there's something, nothing as randomly annoying as Vladimir Putin at the moment in my, in my own life. I don't know about yours. I am so upset with that guy. Suddenly, I thought today, hey, I wonder how God could take this crooked stick and use it for something orchestrated. That God would take the troubles of the nations and the supply chain disruptions and the poverty and the death and the destruction of Ukraine, that God would take the mess that we are going through right now. Otherwise, you would have thought, God, kill Putin. And he wakes up dead. This is what people have been praying. God, may he wake up dead. The guy lives on. <laughs> wake up dead. It's a, I know it's a crazy statement. The Bible says, Galatians 4.4, 4, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. Did you see that? Galatians 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. The fullness of time. Jesus is born at the fullness of time. Ha! Huh. You think which one? How did this fullness, who's calculating? Is it time for you? When is your time? When is God's time? When is the right time? Actually, let me read you what I found online. Jesus, to me, is born at a random time to a random girl who has fallen in love with a random guy called Joseph. By the way, do you know, Joseph dies somewhere between there. Do you realize that Joseph disappears? So Joseph dies prematurely. And so Mary raises Jesus as a single mother. The guy has died. Random. <laughs> His family looks quite ordinary. A random death has happened. But by the time he dies, something amazing has come through his life. I'm saying, you, you wish, <laughs> if I was God, I would make it the family of Jesus. A particular type of family. These guys would live for about a hundred years. Joseph would never die. Just to prove a point. But God allows Joseph to die. Very random. Very random. The Bible says when the time had fully come, he sent his son. Through this vulnerable little couple, there was, no, some, there was nothing amazingly different about them except that they could dream dreams. And it's at a weird time in history, but the Bible says, at the correct time. And there is no way of knowing how correct the time is, except now we can look back and quantify. And this is what researchers say, that Jesus is born at the most strategic point in history. Why? The Roman Empire, the Roman rule, had brought together the most important part of the world. It included the Middle East, North Africa, Europe. They combined that whole group into one empire, put one language on it, say everybody speaks Greek. 
Uh, don't, you, don't you marvel that there was not, nothing like a Roman language? Greek was the language. Interesting that they imposed at that time the same monetary system, the same money, as in what we call now the euro. It was one currency. There was one language. And there was a popular conduit of communication systems there. Jesus is born at the time of peak communication opportunity for the gospel to be preached. In one language, with clear transport system to touch Europe, to touch Africa, to touch the Middle East. And the gospel spreads across the known world. It is argued if Jesus had been born prior, that influence would have been lost. The influence of the apostles would have been destroyed. Now some of you are saying, Lord, it's a bit late for me. And God is saying, no, I'm doing this in the correct time. There are structures God is still putting in place. That is why some things are delayed. So it looks random, but it is orchestrated. God is orchestrating something. It says, Father, a Jew like St. Paul could travel throughout the Roman Empire in relative safety because of the people of many nations and cultures in a universally, with a universally understood language which was Greek and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Add to that the fact that the Romans were also a remarkably tolerant culture regarding the practice of other religions. Now this is the other thing about conquering empires. When they came in, they chopped, they destroyed temples, they commanded everybody to worship the same God. You hear, you remember that guy trying to kill Daniel? The empires of the Medes and the Persians, they were destructive of any other religions. When Nebuchadnezzar came to town, he destroyed the temple, looted everything. The Romans said it's okay to debate. <laughs> they opened up spirituality and religion and gave it back to the people. Jesus is born at the right time. Do you understand? <laughs> He's born at the right time. Thank you, Jesus, that you are orchestrating something for somebody here today. Thank you, Lord, that you are orchestrating. Thank you, Jesus, that you are orchestrating, that you are leading us down the right paths. So I'm talking about divine orchestration, divine intervention. I want to quote one other, just one person, and then probably leave it at that. Luke 2, 36, talk about Anna. These are characters of the Christmas story. Anna looks unfortunate. Now there was Anna, the prophetess. Did you know there were prophetesses before Jesus? In the time of what is called the dark, dark era. When I, Malachi has signed off. And there are no more prophets. God raises a woman called Anna to be a prophetess. What are her circumstances? The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years. Have you ever seen an 84-year-old person? <laughs> Who did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers. Night and day. <laughs> Number one, I have a problem. She gets married and her husband dies after seven years. To me, it doesn't sound like a very good lucky woman. She's cursed. She's too random. <laughs> seven years. Is all she enjoyed of marriage. We're not told how many children she has. Her husband dies at seven, after seven years of, of, of marriage. She then does not remarry. It was quite uncommon in those days for a Jewish woman not to be remarried. 
because you had no status unless you were covered by a man. It was the way of those, those days. Anna does not remarry. She checks into the temple with her widowness or widowhood and gets married to God. And the Bible says she served the Lord by fasting <laughs> and praying until she's 86. I don't know whether there was any other prophetess at that time, but the pain of her personal life, she immerses into prayer. Instead of mourning about her loss for the rest of her life, she digs into the gift of God inside of her and unlocks the capacity to pray and to hear the voice of the Lord. 86 years she is praying. Day and night, serving. What is it, Anna? What's your problem? Why don't you just <laughs> do what everybody does? Something has gripped her. Out of what happened to be a random event, people die. Statistical. People become widows. Go out, find something. These women would donate themselves to rich men and become their concubines. They would donate themselves so that they have shelter and a name. I'll have your babies if you want. I'll plow your fields. That's what a concubine was. You see, the random event of your life, and I don't know what has happened randomly to you this year. I pray that you find the passion of Hannah, of Anna. To say, I'm going to take these things and mix them up in God. I'm going to soak them in God. I'm going to find my gifts. Yes, I have problems. Stuff has happened to me, but I'm going to devote myself to a cause greater than my life. Hmm? A cause greater than my life. My friends, you need, as, we, as, as we celebrate Christmas, you know, God has given every one of us a reason now to take the, the fragments of our lives, the pieces and the mess, the mess of your life. And to say, okay, I, I am a mess here, but these are my gifts. These are my weaknesses, but these are my strengths. She took these issues before God. And the Bible says, if you can go to the next verse there, we, we finish. Bible says, coming out in that instant, huh? and you have been praying for years, but in a moment, she gets up from the prayer room and walks into the court of the temple. And her eyes land on Christ. Sometimes you are going to the toilet. Sometimes you miss a bus. <laughs> Sometimes you are fired from your job. And it looks random. But God of heaven is wanting to orchestrate something for us if we will trust him. In the same spirit that fashions the story of Christmas, she comes out in that instant and gives thanks to the Lord. Frail as she is, 86 years old. And spoke of him to all who looked for redemption. In She finally opens her mouth. And thank God for Anna, because if we did not have this prophetess interceding and carrying and praying for us all, I don't know what could have gone wrong. 
but she came out in the right instant and spoke of Christ. Again, I speak over you, friends, that your randomness is going to become orchestrations of God. May God create special encounters for you this Christmas time going into 2023. May God bring you key people. <laughs> huh? May God bring you key people. Come on, I wish I could tell you the things God has done for me through orchestrated randomness. <laughs> Orchestrated randomness. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, I'll close. What time is it? I've overdone it. Are the children still awake? Yeah. You see, I, I, I tell you, when I tell you guys stories, I told you about in every shirt I buy, every car I drive. These things. God, I think God, God, are you seriously saying to me you were you were working this thing out? Are you seriously? Seriously, a car? <laughs> a car? <laughs> when um, somebody was reminding me about the Volvo, uh, I, I drove a Volvo for a few years. I knew the color. I knew the model. I knew the trim. I knew exactly what the car should look like and I couldn't find it in the whole world. World. In the whole Google world. I searched everywhere until I told my wife, New Year's Eve. No, no. After Christmas. I said, let us drive to White City. We drove to White City, parked, stepped into a car giant and as we walked in, the car was being parked. Color, trim, Every detail. <laughs> they were trying, they were putting the, the price on it. And I said to God, Are you kidding me? Please stand to your feet. We need to close this. Some of you have asked God, How will it be? <laughs> How will my life be? I came to comfort you. It shall come to pass. Just devote yourself to him. Lift up your hands. Surrender to divine orchestration. Surrender your randomness to divine orchestration. Lord God, today we lift up hands as we celebrate Christmas time. I speak over this congregation that our randomness is going to be swept away and caught up into supernatural orchestrations in which we will find the husband, the wife, the job, the house, the breakthrough, the career, the information I need. These things shall happen. They shall come to pass. And we declare that Jesus came through such patterns. And they speak of the patterns of our lives. And we say yes to this supernatural capacity to, to find our path. To meet the right people. To knock the right doors. To ring the right number. To shake the right hand. Hide us, Lord, from time wasters. Hide us from time wasters. We have no time to waste. We want to be used by God for a purpose in our days, in our time. Therefore, we say yes to supernatural orchestration. We say yes to supernatural guidance. I want to encourage somebody who has felt that 2022 has been too difficult. May 2023 show you that the fragments of this year, God can turn into a beautiful picture in 2023. Declare it. And we declare it by faith in Jesus' name. Now, if you believe it, clap your hands, all you people.